What's going on YouTube? In today's video, we're doing Leap Code Problem 2799 and it's titled Count Complete Subarrays in an Array. Count Complete Subarrays in an Array and the explanation is you're given an array nums consisting of positive integers. And we call a subarray of an array complete if the following conditions are satisfied. And the conditions are the number of distinct elements in the subarray is equal to the number of distinct elements in the whole array. So basically a distinct element is a number that is different from other numbers, right? And we want to return the number of complete subarrays. And right here we have a note that a subarray is a contiguous non-empty part of an array. So basically they are touching and in sequence. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to show you this example so we can make sure we have a good understanding of what a subarray is. And this is a good example to do that because in this input example, there are 10 good subarrays. And basically every subarray in this example meets the criteria to be a complete array because there's only one distinct element in it. Let's walk through it one by one and I'll show you real quick the 10 good subarrays that are within this. So that's one, that's two, that's three, now it's four. Yes, the whole array is considered a subarray. Now we move over one and start here. That's five, that's six, that's seven. We move over one again, that's eight, that's nine. Now we move over one more and that's 10. Here we are in IntelliJ. The first thing I wanna do is create a variable for the number of distinct elements in our array. We'll call it distinct elements. We'll set that equal to zero. And another thing I want to do is create a variable called the complete subarray count equals zero. And remember, we want to return the complete subarray count, right? That's what we're trying to find. Okay, so let's break down the problem. The first thing that we want to do is find the number of distinct elements within our whole array, right? So in order to do that, I'm going to create a hash set of type integer. Let's just call it set. And remember, a hash set does not allow duplicates. So a simple way to find out the number of distinct elements is to just loop through every number uh, within nums and add it to our hash set. So essentially, every number in our hash set will be distinct. And to do that, we'll just do enhance for loop and we'll just simply do set.add in. And then what we'll do is we'll say our distinct elements equals our set dot size. Okay, so now that we have our number of distinct elements within the whole array, we want to begin our process of looping through and creating each possible subarray. And to do that, we'll do a traditional for loop. And right here, I want to create a nested for loop because we're going to start at i and essentially every subarray, we're going to use our variable j in increment j to basically expand out from i. And we want j to equal i because we always want them to start at the same index. Now before I go any further, what I want to do is create another hash set and we'll call this set2. And now what I want to do is take our set2 and add our nums at j. And nums at j is essentially each character in the current subarray that we're at, right? We're starting with index i and we're incrementing j each time to expand to a different subarray. Now, so we're looping through if our set to dot size equals our distinct elements. Remember, that's what we're checking for and that's the criteria that makes it considered a complete subarray. So if it does equal that, then that means, congratulations, we just found our first subarray that meets the criteria of being a complete subarray. What that also means is if there are any possible subarrays left to the right of where J currently is at, then we also know that those subarrays also meet the criteria. And the reason that is, is because once we've gotten to our first subarray, right, that meets the criteria, then we already know that we've reached our maximum number of distinct elements possible. And how do we know that? Because we've already gone through and loop through the entire array and we know that the maximum distinct elements is what we've already determined, right? We know that there can't possibly be any more distinct elements being added 
Therefore, every possible subarray that expands from that point on is considered a complete subarray. This condition is always going to hit from that point on. So what we do from here is we take our complete subarray count and it's going to plus equal our numsat length minus j. And what that's going to do is add the current subarray where we found this condition to be true, right? Our set to that size equals the distinct elements. And by minusing j, that's also going to add any possible subarrays to the right of that to our complete subarray count. And the next thing we want to do is just add a break statement here. Because once we have this, we want to break out of our current nested for loop, go back to our first for loop, right, and increment i, and start the process all over. Mm -hmm.